Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Perry High School, where tonight in the NWCC season opener, the Perry Commodores welcome in the Lima Temple Christian Pioneers. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And Gilly, it's the NWCC opener for both teams. These are crosstown rivals. They know a lot about each other. Well, it's going to be an NWCC you know, opening uh, affair for 2023-2024 season. And you want to get off to, a, you know, a strong start here. And, you know, it's important for Temple Christian to come over here on the road, even though it's a short distance. Anytime you can sneak one on the road, it uh, definitely pays dividends for you as we get ready to crown another year of basketball going into 2024 in January. You know, for the Commodores, you know, coming off a topsy-turvy season, you know, under a new coach and everything and a new system. It is a familiar name as he did work under Coach Tabler here. So he does have, you know, his feet wet as far as being here at Perry. So I, I think we're in for an interesting game. You know, you got Bruce Bowman, who's been a lifetime guy that's done things the right way for Temple Christian, that understands the game. So, yeah, it's going to be a very challenging uh, game tonight. And let's take a look at the Pioneers, Darren. They come in two and one. Obviously, the first game in the NWCC. Defense is their calling card. They're only giving up 41 points a game. And you look at Lima Perry, who's offensively averaging 40 points a game. You figure this would be a, a, a good matchup. But as I talked to Coach Nolte before the game, he said he wants to get his kids out and running. He wants to do layups. He well, said layup, layup, layup. Well, you know, and he's gonna he's gonna lean on his athleticism and make the thing like you just said. He wants to make it a full court, you know, get it and go situation, turn and burn, whatever you want to use, where I think Temple Christian wants to take play the court and take it and divide it in half and try to get into some offensive sets and lock people down defensively in the quarter court. And for the Perry Commodores, they come in at one and two. You look at the schedule, they started off kind of rough, Darren. They lost those first two to Pandora, Gilboa, and Audeville. No slouches in no, any respect. No, both of those ball clubs, Danny, yeah. are off to a good start. I but, totally agree. Yeah, but they came back with a really nice win against Delphus Jefferson. Yeah, they, they and I believe that was what was on the road, and yes, that's a yeah. tough place to play at the stage over there. Um, but, uh, yeah, Delphus has, has got a really good post-presence player, and to do what the Commodore's done after, you know, dropping their opening two to get one against Jefferson. They got a chance to get to 500, but more importantly, 1-0 in the conference. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineup. For the Temple Christian Pioneers, they'll come out with number 10, Jabaz Dupree, a six-foot senior. Number 12, Malachi Menke is a 5'11 junior. Number 23, Alex Patrick is a 5'11 junior. Number 33, Dawson Clay, a 6'5 senior. He's the leading scorer at nine points a game. And number 34, Isaiah Kaiser, a six-foot junior. For the Perry Commodores, they'll start Marcus Hill, a 5'7 sophomore. Andrew Nanshoff, a 5'7 senior. Zamir Daniels, a 6'3 senior senior. Jason Thomas is a 6'3 senior. And rounding out the starting five, Brady Shively is a 5'8 junior. So here come the Commodores. They'll come out on offense. They'll go right down low to first shot from the paint. Rebound comes down. Uh, there's a fight for the ball on the floor, and it's recovered by the Temple Christian Pioneers. Pioneers will bring it down. 7.33 to go. There's a three from the top of the key. Ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Commodores as they get out and running. That's what you want to see, Darren. You're going to see the Commodores running a lot tonight. Yeah, they, they, they want to push the basketball, but they've got to defend in the quarter court also, partner. And right there, Temple Christian had a wide open look, you know, with nobody within 10 feet. I'm sure that's not one that Coach Nolte wants to, to give up any anytime sure, in the near sure. future. Yeah. So. He didn't say anything, but I'm sure that's going to be adjusted here in the next couple of minutes. This is Daniels pushing the ball down low, and a nice backdoor cut by Marcus Hill, the 5'7 sophomore, sneaks down the baseline and gets an easy bucket, and the Commodores lead 2-0. Yeah, Hill went off the back screen at the high post by Jack, uh, Jason Thomas, excuse me, and there's that pressure we talked about. Yeah, there's the steal from Brady Shively. They'll go down the floor, and they just throw it away. You're going to see a lot of that, Gilly, regardless of what the score is. That's their game they That's play. That's their name of the game. That's exactly yeah. right. Make your, make your defense your offense. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Pro Forma Adeline, one source with infinite resources for promotional, print, e-commerce, and multimedia needs. Our business is growing your business. Pro Forma is our scoreboard sponsor. So 6.56 to go. Commodores lead 2-0. Temple tries to bring the ball down the floor. Good job by Temple Christian right there, maintaining composure and breaking that. Looked like a diamond in one press. 
the foul went out on the perimeter. And foul will go against number 10, Jason Thomas. And Gilly, I don't think uh, Northwest Ohio gives enough credit to Bruce Bowman. What a fantastic job he does over at Temple Christian. And they've got a small student body. And that guy does a terrific job year in and year oh, out. Oh, year in and year out. And, you know, he's he's a pleasure to get to know as a person. He's, he, I just say he's a really he's, good person. He has a very high basketball IQ, but he cares about the kids and doing things the right way. And, you know, that's what you want in your mentor you know, within your building sure. and also, you know, running the ship, so to speak. Absolutely, absolutely. And here you see Temple running this offensive set, taking their time. They're, they know that the pressure is going to be heavy. I think uh, they got Hill right there on the reach in. I think you're right. That foul is on number zero, Marcus Hill, the 5'7 sophomore. And Gilly, I'm telling you, Hill looks like a really good athlete, both offensively and defensively. What we've seen he already. Looks quick, that, does yes, it? Yes, he does. You know, got a little high, extra hop in his step. Here come the Temple, excuse me, the Temple Pioneers down 2 0, 6 17 to go. Danny Holbert, Darren Gilbert from Perry High School in the NWCC opener for both of these squads. They've both played three games, but this is the first league game they've encountered this year. Really nice job defending the basketball away from Dupree, that being Marcus Hill, almost like in a face guard situation, no help side defense. And there you saw what happened when the Temple Christian guard picked up the ball. They just swarmed him, and they've got to figure that out real quick. So Hill will bring the ball down the floor. He's guarded up top by Jabaz Dupree. They'll swing around as Andrew Nanshoff on the wing. Kicks it back out. They'll go inside to the high post. Nice cut to the rim. Ball comes off the mark. Rebound comes down. Comes back to Perry. Shot goes back up. Rebound comes into Temple. And that's Boy, was he explosive over. off the floor was Jason Thomas. Just couldn't finish that offensive rebound. They had two looks at it. If you're Temple Christian, you've got to make sure you're giving one and done. Second, third opportunities will not help the cause. And you're seeing Temple with a very methodical approach here as they're taking their time on the offensive set. And, and you got to believe that they want to keep this score in the 40s somewhere where they can keep this game manageable. Nice block here by Thomas. They'll swing it around. Throw it away. Another turnover from the Perry Commodores entering the game now for Perry. Number four, this is Hunter Scott. He'll come in at number 21, Desmond Cobb, the 5'9 sophomore. So a relatively young uh, group for both of these squads. They're playing a lot of sophomores and juniors. Well, I'm sitting here getting ready to smile because the Scott kid just entered. I had the pleasure of coaching, coaching his father and having his mother in the classroom, both athletic and Yeezy crazy. It means I'm getting real old if that's the case. <laughs> There's a nice job. And there you see. Speak of the devil right there. Hunter, there is Scott. Hunter Scott, the 6'2". Yeah. Junior with the offensive rebound and stick back. Missed his own shot, but he gets the rebound and picks it up, and it's 4-0 The Perry Commodores on the pro forma scoreboard. 4.23 to go. Danny Rick, Darren Gilbert from Perry High School. They'll try to go inside. There's another steal. This is Zamir Daniel with the steals. He takes it all the way in, and he takes it up, and he gets fouled. He's going to go to the line for an old-fashioned three. And, Darren, there you see Zamir Daniel, the strength that young man, goes coast to coast and lays it in. Well, and, may, you know, didn't avoid the contact. Went to the contact, but yet, like you said, was strong enough to get it up to the rim and get the old-fashioned and one. He's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So Zamir Daniel, the 6'3 senior, they like to put him down on the block, and he likes to muscle that ball up. There you saw his versatility, Darren. He gets the steal on the opposite side and takes it all the way to the rim. Yeah, and he, and he did it, you know, the, the best way he possibly could. That's getting both of his feet secure off that two-foot jump stop. Tremendous absolutely, balance. absolutely. That's a great point. There's a three ball from the left corner, and it's good. That's the first three of the game for the Temple Pioneers. Malachi Menke with the nice three ball, and it makes it six to three on the Pro Forma scoreboard. Nice unselfish player there by Dupree. Excuse me on the dribble drive with a little kick to the corner and the finish on the three. They only gave him a two. Oh, no, no that changed it. No, that changed it. There you see Zamir Daniel. They're going to say he used his off arm, Darren, but that was another physical drive there. Uh, I did not see that, but that's what uh, challenged Stewart. Okay. Appar apparently what he's saying is, is he's saying he established position with the forearm to create space. 
what they're saying. Eric Doki, Brett Roberson, and Challenge Stewart are officials tonight. 3.38 to go. Here come the Temple Christian Pioneers down the floor. There's a nice dribble drive to the bucket. They'll kick it back out. The ball gets corralled by number 24, Derek Schultz. Pressure defense on the perimeter by the Commodores. Coach Nolte imploring his kids to keep it up. There's a three ball from the top of the key. Zamir Daniel with the rebound. Here comes Scott with the ball. And that's where Perry will set it up on the left side of the floor. 3 yeah, that was to go. A, <laughs> excuse me, that was a deep three that he let rip there. Ball gets thrown away. Here come the Pioneers as they get a steal down 6-3. Three. three ball from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's corralled by the Pioneers. They'll go back out top. Dribble drive to the middle. And the shot's up, and it's good. Number 10, Jabaz Dupree, the six-foot senior. The left-hander knocks it in, and he closes the gap at 6-5. to five. Nice jump stop on that move right there, avoiding contact. 2.36 to go. Perry leads 6-5. to five. Nice crowd on tap tonight for both these teams' season opener in the NWCC. Very familiar with each other, Gilly. These kids know each other from the summer. They're cross-town rivals, but uh, a lot of these kids know each other from uh, summer basketball and other sports. Entering the game now for the Commodores, Commodore, excuse me, number 22, Brady Shively will come back in the game. And number 10, Jason Thomas. Both those young men started this game tonight. And there you see Marcus Hill getting a much-deserved rest. So Temple keeping it close here in the uh, waning moments of the first quarter, excuse me, 2.15 to go, down 6-5. There's that heavy pressure by the Commodores as they'll go full court, and Bruce Bowman's going to take a timeout. They'll take a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Perry High School with 2.10 to go here in the first quarter. The Commodores lead the Temple Christian Pioneers 6-5. to five. And Gilly Temple's doing a nice job of keeping this one close and handling that pressure from the Commodores. Well, and it's a combination of scouting report and also game tempo and tempo control. And right now they're, they're dictating the play. I think you got a charge. Yeah, there you go. You saw number 33, Dawson Clay. He's the 6'5 senior. He's the leading scorer at nine points a game, and they're going to say he just lowered his shoulder, and they're going to get him on a charge. Yeah, he couldn't get his body under control just quite quick enough and dip that shoulder into the defender. Nice job taking that charge there for the Commodores. <laughs> yeah, I got Mark Shine sitting here beside me. We both had the same look on our face. <laughs> oh, shoot. 153 to go. Perry leads 6-5. to five. They'll go around the perimeter here. They'll go down deep into the corner, trying to push that. There's a nice steal out top. Here he comes, number 12, Malachi Menke takes it up, and they're going to say a foul before the shot goes up, and they're going to get number 21 from the Commodores, Desmond Cobb, on the foul. Desi didn't like that one too well, did no, he? he did not. He did not. He wanted to have a little contact action there. Andrew Nanshoff will check back in, uh, taking a seat for the Commodores. Number five, Micah Olatunde will take a seat. So he's playing seven or eight right now. He's running a lot of kids in there, and I think that's part of his system to speed this game along. 136 to go. Temple with the ball out top, down six to five. They'll swing it around to Menke with the ball. Three ball from the left side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Brady Shively as he'll outlet it to the left side. This is an Andrew Nanchuk with the ball, takes it in, and then, oh, he just misses the shot. Andrew Nanchuk with a nice dribble drive, and the well, ball goes take, off. That was it? a really nice take, and it just goes off the rim. So no luck there for Mr. Nanchoff as he misses the uh, easy bunny. So here come the Temple Christian Pioneers. We're at one minute to go here in the first quarter. They're down six to five. As they're going steady around the perimeter, trying to get the ball down on the low post. There's a dribble drive by Menke. He's going to kick it back out. They'll go left side of the wing. There's a dribble drive to the hoop. Shot goes up, it's off the mark, and they're going to say it goes back to Perry. Yeah, that was a great dribble drive to the rim. I just think he short-armed it right there. He gets that and over the rim. You know, they're going to take the lead at 7-6 to six with just under this 45-second mark here left in the first quarter, partner. Absolutely. So, Boy, Coach <laughs> Bowman's going to the bench, isn't he? I mean, yes, he's, he is. He's going to play a lot of players. Looks like Perry's going to play a lot. Entering the game now for the Temple Christian Pioneers, number 32, Hewitt Wright. The 6'1 junior comes in the game. 
Desmond Cobb will hold the ball up top. He'll go Brady Shively to the left side. Shively puts it on his hip as the clock continues to run. We're at 30 seconds. Perry leads 6-5. to five. They'll kick it back out to Nanshoff off the right side. Going to hold that ball for the last shot. Temple sitting back in a little bit of a man, but they're playing off the uh, ball quite a bit here. We're down to 13 seconds. Shively with the ball up top. Swings it around. They'll go Hunter Scott. They'll push it down low. Oh, the and gamble a nice got him in trouble, job didn't it? By number 10, Jason Thomas gets to the rim and he makes it eight to five. Half court shot goes up and that'll do it for the first quarter. After one quarter from Perry High School, the Commodores lead the Temple Christian Pioneers eight to five. We'll have second quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School. After one quarter of play, the Commodores lead the Temple Christian Pioneers 8-5. to five. And Gilly, uh, kind of a low-scoring game from what I expected. I thought we'd see a lot more points, but both teams trying to find their way in this quarter. Trying to f feel their way the first quarter, like you just said. Great point there. Uh, you know, Perry, last 19 seconds, you know, they decided to, to play it down for one shot. Got what they wanted. Got a little duck in action to their... Big man inside, Thomas, the senior, and he delivered there on a power layup to extend that thing to three points. There you see Derek Schultz with the dribble drive, and he kind of lost his footing there, and he uh, buckled his knee a little bit, and I hope that young man is okay. He gets up hobbling a little bit. Coach Bowman says, if you, <laughs> I just saw Coach Bowman look at him and look, look if you're going to take the ball, go all the way, which is great advice because he kind of stopped there mid-stride. mid, mid, uh, mid Yeah, he's he's... A little lame right now with his yeah, it looks like the way. leg a little bit. Yeah. Brady Shively with the ball and uh, started to go to the rim. And uh, Challen Stewart says, no, you walk, son. So they Must got him on a shuffle call. Yeah, feet. that's exactly what happened. 7.39 to go here in the second quarter. Commodores lead 8-5. to five. Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert from Perry High School. Good crowd tonight, partner. Yeah, Close really good end. crowd on both yeah. sides. Absolutely. As we get ready to enter the... Holiday <laughs> right. season. Yeah. A nice dribble drive in the middle of the floor. Ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. It's corralled by the Pioneers. And a nice job by Isaiah Kaiser to get the ball. Puts his own shot back up. Rebound comes down to Zamir Daniel. Here come the Commodores. Brady Shively dribble drive. A little 10-footer goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. Quincy Settlemeyer for the Pirates. Or excuse me, for the Pioneers as he grabs the ball. They're going to get a foul on Andrew Nanshaw. So, yeah, I keep forgetting we're going back to the I, team was fouls. Just, I was just getting ready to say the team fouls. It used it, to be, man, if you committed a <laughs> foul, it was uh, 84 feet away from the basket. You can guarantee the coach is going to lose some hair on that it's one. It's driving so. me crazy, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here come the Pioneers. Oh, nice little duck in, nice, nice pass. Job. Malachi Menke with the dribble drive, and he cuts back and gets the points, and he makes it 8-7 to seven on the Pro Forma scoreboard. Good job by Dawson Clay setting it up with a little inside cut. That shot goes off the mark there by number 10, Jason Thomas. And then here, the dump off. Yeah, here come the Pioneers with a chance to take the lead with 6.34 to go until halftime. Perry leads 8-7. to seven. There's a nice steal. Here comes Jason Thomas. He takes it up and hammers it oh, home. And boy. he hammers it home. Sure did. My goodness. Let's see if that get, gets him a little worked up here. The home red and white. Makes it 10 to 7 on the pro former scoreboard. There's Menke with the dribble drive as he goes to the right side, puts it up. Ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Pioneers. They'll go back up. And a Mr. nice Clay. job. Dawson Clay on Dawson the glass. Dawson Clay with the Rebound, stick back, and a foul. He'll go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line for a chance at an old-fashioned three. That's a big offensive rebound and a finish right there. Kids giving him some good minutes. Absolutely. Dawson Clay, the 6'5 senior, is the leading scorer for the Pioneers as he averages nine points a game, and there you see why, as he really works the boards hard. Oh, yeah. Shot is up. And it's good. Dawson Clay, he ties it up at 10. So Dawson's got four on the night. Excuse me, three on the night. 
Yeah, coming into the night, he was, you know, had 11, 11 free throw attempts from the foul line. So he's he gets to the line quite often. Marcus Hill out top of the ball. He's guarded by Dupree. Really good matchup of two really good athletes out top of the perimeter. There's a dribble drive on the right side, and they're going to say that uh, looks like foul will go against number 23, Alex Patrick. Well, that's his third. That's, that's his big. Third, that's a big one. Alex Patrick started tonight's game, and that's his third foul of the night. So let's see what Coach Bowman does here. Yeah, I think he. I think he brought in. He, he brought in number 22, Nolan Wright. Nolan Wright is a 5'9 freshman. So a big assignment for that young man as he's guarding the ball out top. There they got number 10, Jabaz Dupree, who was guarding Marcus Hill out top. They're going to say he hand checked him. Yeah, I think he thought he could get his hands on that first initial fumble right there. About the time he reached his hand in there, the ball got secured by Hill and they got him reaching across the arm. So we are all knotted up at 10 here with 5.37 to go. And so far, so good for Temple Christian trying to uh, change the narrative of this game. There's a nice dribble drive to the basket. The ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. There's that man again. Yep, Number Mr. 33, Clay. Dawson Clay, who's really doing a nice job on both ends of the court. 5.18 to go. This is Temple's chance to take the lead here. Dupree with the ball out top. There's a steal. Marcus Hill with a steal. He's going to go down the right side, and he's going to, oh, he misses the shot, but he's undercut, and the foul is going to go against number 30. That'll be Quincy Settlemeyer on the call. And Marcus Hill will go to the free throw, free throw line, excuse me, with a chance to give the Commodores a lead. Yeah, he almost took it coast to coast. Great, made a great deflection, then the steal in the quarter court defending Temple Christian and took it all the way to the rim, just unfortunately couldn't get the lab, but it's gonna get two free throw attempts for his efforts. Hill misses the first one. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs as he knocks in the second one. Wouldn't you say it's after Poe Partner that a free throw is a foul, and Lee's is our sponsor. There I say you that, go. say that every time. <laughs> and right come, right That's back. That's Mr. Clay. Clay comes back and knocks it in. That's called a rim run. And, and he, 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 <laughs> yeah. just, he, he actually beat Perry's defenders down the floor. And, you know, as a head coach, that's what Coach Nolte's talking to him right now. In very polite terms, speaking to them during this timeout. How can a post player beat you down the floor? And he does just that. And, and with he, just, that, yeah. he rim ran it. And with that, we're going to take a break. We'll step aside. We'll be back with further action right after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School with 4.57 to go until halftime. The Temple Christian Pioneers have taken their first lead of the night, and they're just doing it on hustle, Darren. They're doing it on hustle, and they're doing it at the defensive end of the floor. This is Perry will bring the ball down. Hunter Scott thought about taking the shot, dribbles up and takes a nice little left-handed 10-footer. It goes off the mark. Scott gets his own rebound. He'll kick it out to Marcus Hill. Marcus Hill will go back to Brady Shively, and that's where he'll set it up out top. Yeah, that's a shame right there because they did everything the right way, blocked out and everything, just didn't secure the, the basketball. Here's Scott, goes to the left side, kick it back out. Shively from the top of the key, it's off the mark. Rebound comes down. Zamir Daniels catches the ball and throws it back in, but it goes out of bounds. It'll go back to the Pioneers. So nothing falling for Perry right now. Everything working for the Temple Christian Pioneers as they lead 12-11 with 4.19 to go. And, Gilly, what, do you think they'll take a chance to take some time off the clock here? Maybe no, I think you're just going to play through, you know. And if you're Perry, you know, the half that you're playing right now is not what you want to, but it's only one possession sure, game. Sure, sure. Yeah. we got so much basketball left that, you know, it's a game of momentum and twists and turns. There's a three-pointer on the way. It comes off the rim. Rebound comes down to Pioneers. Shot goes up. Number 24, Derek Schultz, goes off the left side, gets the bucket, and he makes it 14-11 with 3.51 to go. And they got a travel call as number 21 for the Commodores. Desmond Cobb tries to take it up the left side, and he gets called for the travel. 
So Zamir Daniel and Brady Shively will take a seat for the Commodores as they'll bring back in yeah, Co Coach Jason Nolte. Thomas. Excuse me, I'm yeah, my, no, you're fine. my fault. Or fault. <laughs> but uh, you know, Coach Nolte's up. He's trying. He's trying to change the complexion of the game and make it a full court game. And you could see that during his uh, defensive prowess right there. He went to some full court stuff. Three ball was on the way by number 22. That was Nolan Wright, the freshman. And it goes off the mark, and they're going to get a foul. We'll see who that foul is on for Temple Christian. Number 24. 24, yeah. My, my yeah, fault, yeah. Yeah, yeah Derek 24. Schultz. Derek Schultz, that's his first I foul. I thought it was 34, but it was 24. Yeah, it was Schultz, and that's his first call. 14 to 11, 320 to go here until halftime. They'll try to push the ball down to the block. They'll kick it back out. Tell you, that's a great say, job yeah. defensively. And there you see it again. Dawson Clay on the defensive end does a great job of getting in between the defender and the basket, and he just makes the play. He's the, he, he understands his role within the system. He's played numerous minutes and numerous games, you know, for Coach Bowman there at Temple Christian. And if you notice the last possession down the floor where Perry was called for the travel, guess who was setting themselves up for another charge? Mr. Clay. He does a great job. 3.14 to go. Temple Christian leads 14 to 11 here until halftime. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert, WOSN High School Basketball here. This is Dupree with the ball as he dribble drives. They'll kick it back out. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. Number 24, Derek Schultz, the 5'11 sophomore, and he makes it 17 to 11 on the Pro Forma scoreboard. And here come the Pioneers. That's a great kick out there again by Dupree. You know, he struggled to get anything going offensively, but he's definitely give the basketball up they to just, his open open players to knock shots down. Tried to push the ball to Zamir Daniel down on the low post, and he shuffles his feet in another Commodore turnover. And Coach Nolte is furious right now as he's trying to get his kids to make the right plays here. And there's a collision out at midcourt between a couple of the Temple Christian Pioneers. Yeah, that was just miscommunication right there. Very lucky. That was not a turnover for Perry because that would have been a breakout for a layup. This is Nolan Wright, the freshman, as he gets it out to Dupree. Dupree up top, guarded by Marcus Hill. They'll swing it back out. Ever patient by the Pioneers. There's a dribble drive. Nice shot goes up, goes off the mark. Rebound comes down, and they're going to say that uh, that foul is going to go against number 24, Derek Schultz, as he runs right into Marcus Hill. I'll tell you what, Coach Bowman's not saying a word. You know what? you got to like the kid's effort. He oh, got absolutely. the thing to the box. He just short armed but That's tough a shot in the game, that 8 to 10 foot runner. Right, and the difference right now, it, it, the, both teams are getting good looks. Mm -hmm. and Temple's just knocking them down right now. you got to believe that that'll change for Perry because they continue to run a good offense, and they're getting to the rim. Yeah, and I think defensively, anytime Perry posts up, they're just satisfied to play behind him and dig down into the post. Yeah, and Gilly, right now, Temple Christian in the second quarter has outscored Perry 12 to 3. I mean, a big second quarter for the Pioneers, and the Commodores continue to miss the short shots. There you see Zamir Daniel goes off the mark. Entering the game now for Perry, number one, Andrew Nanshoff. He'll come back in, and Brady Shively. They'll uh, take uh, Micah Olatundi to the bench as Hunter Scott goes to the bench, too. 151 to go. Commodores lead 17 to 11. This is Shively as he tries to push the ball up. Rebound comes down. Nice job by Zamir Daniel. And that's what Daniel's got to do. He's got to get in there and get presence in the oh, middle. Oh, and he's, yeah, that's where that's where he gets his money. That's his bread and butter is attacking the rim and, and attacking it, whether it be with a dribble or, or on the glass. But, yeah, that's his that's his forte. And that makes it 17 to 13. And they got Andrew Nanshoff on the foul. And I'll be honest with you, Darren, I thought Nanshoff was playing some really good defense right there. I did not see it, but apparently it looked like a hand check is what they called. That's his second foul of the night. Entering the game now for the Commodores, number 21, Desmond Cobb comes back in, and he'll have the responsibility of guarding, excuse me, guarding the freshman, Nolan Wright, who's played a really good half. This is Wright from the left side. He'll dribble drive to the middle, almost loses the ball. He'll go back up to Dupree. Dupree is guarded by Marcus Hill up top. They'll kick it back out. Shot from the high post goes up, off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Pioneers as they'll retain possession with 1.10 to go. This is Dupree. He'll swing it back around. They'll go Derek Schultz. Swing it back out to Dupree. 
Doing a nice job of taking care of the ball. You know that, Darren? Yeah, that's what I was just getting ready. I was thinking the same thing. Boy, they're dribble driving, being aggressive with it, but they're also playing under control. Three ball from the top. It goes up. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Brady Shively. He'll race it down the floor. He finds Daniel hitting the basket, and he knocks it in. Zamir Daniel, that's beating him down the court, Gilly, and that's what Coach Nolte wants to see. Well, that's the athleticism that he brings to the forefront, and he just displayed it right there, and we talked about that, or you brought that up. You know, within the last minute segment that we just went through, that that's what he does well. That goes off the hands of Dawson Clay. Clay had position, and he just drops the ball, goes out of bounds, and he makes it 17 to 15 with 22 seconds to go. The Commodores have a chance to tie or take the lead. That's a tough one to catch right there. I think that one's got to be laid off a little softer and possibly the bounce pass. The right idea was there, but, boy, I don't think people understand how tough it is for a post player to get them hands up there that quick yeah. in the post area to make the, the move and as well as the catch. So Hill will bring the ball down with 20 seconds to go. He's guarded up top by Jabaz Dupree. We're down to 15 seconds. Shively on the left side. He gets a screen from Daniel. They'll try to push the ball in, and Clay deflects the ball with six seconds to go. Here comes Dupree. We're down to three. Dupree drives, kicks it back out. And the shot goes up, and I don't believe he got it off in time. So after one half a play from Perry High School, the Temple Christian Pioneers lead the Perry Commodores 17 to 15. We'll have second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School. Second half action, Danny Obrick, Darren Gilbert, and Gilly. Temple Christian leads this thing 17 to 15. We talked about it earlier. They're calling Carter's defense, and they've done a really nice job defensively. But what I'm most impressed is the way they've handled the Perry pressure. Yeah, Temple Christian, there's no question. They controlled the tempo in the first half, but you made a great point right there. Their ability to handle the basketball, you know, against the, you know, because pressure, that Perry does a really good job, and they have for years, of defending the basketball. And, I mean, they swarm you. You pick the basketball up, there's somebody up into your crawl. I like to use the, the term basketball crawl. Right. But up into your basketball space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Temple Christian's done a really good job being strong with the basketball, number one. Number two, attacking the gaps. And number three, kicking it out to the open shooters. And I think that's part of the reason why they're ahead here, you know, heading into this third quarter by, by a deuce. Here's Zamir Daniel with the shot. Mark, ball goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. Daniel gets it back. He's going to dribble drive, go to the middle. Looks for Brady Shively down line. Shively puts it up, and it's blocked by Dawson Clay. Shively gets the loose ball, kicks it back out. Three ball on the way, and it's good. Marcus Hill knocks down the triple, and he gives Perry the 18-17 lead. Yeah, you can tell the effort defensively for Perry has picked it up as they come out and what, got an offensive rebound and then turn right around and put some solid pressure on the basketball. Leading score for the first half for Perry. And there's a three ball from the right side, comes off the mark, rebound comes down to Hill. Leading score for Perry, Zamir Daniel with six, Jason Thomas with four. There's a dribble drive to the bucket, the ball goes off the mark and they're gonna say the foul goes against number 33, Dawson Clay. Temple Christian has Three uh, players, Mankey with five, Clay with five, and Schulte with five. But uh, the story for Temple Christian has been the play of Dawson Clay, the 6'5 senior, has done an outstanding job on both ends of the court. Yeah, he, he's let his physical presence along with his length show here in the first two quarters of the ball game right there. Tried to take a charge. You know, thought Thomas was a little bit out of control, but give Thomas credit. He slithered by him just enough to create the contact defensively and get the blocking call. This is Jason Thomas as he goes to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima. Wapak Delphus and St. Mary's called Lee's for all your catering needs. And he makes one out of two. And Manchoff gets the rebound. He'll get it back to Zamir Daniels who takes it in, kicks it back out. They'll go three ball to the left side by Marcus Hill. Daniel with the rebound and there you see the strength and Zamir Daniel starting to flex his muscle and he makes it 21-17. Coach Bowman's gonna take a timeout and Perry comes out on fire. With 6.47 to go, the Commodores lead 21-17. Welcome back to Perry High School. 
We're at the start of the third quarter here. The Commodores come out of the locker room with a renewed enthusiasm, and they have a 21-17 lead with 6.47 to go. And Gilly, I, I, you got to believe they went into the locker room and said, look, Zamir Daniel is a physical presence. Get him the ball down low. Yeah, I think they had a little meeting in there to uh, an eye grabber, so to speak, and they've come out and they've showed it in Temple Christian inability to rebound the basketball and giving them second, third opportunities, and it's come back to, to haunt them. But, boy, there's Clay right there for <laughs> Dawson Temple Clay, Chris. Yeah. It's like he heard, you know, Mr. Gilbert, <laughs> you know, I'm going to rebound this thing, and we're going to score. <laughs> Dawson Clay gets the deuce, and here come the Commodores. They come back down. Marcus Hill comes down, and he gets a nice little uh, underhanded layup, and he makes it 23-19, and here comes the pressure from the Commodores as Temple Christian brings it up the left side of the floor. They'll get it out to Dupree, who'll set up shop up top, swinging around. This is number 34, Isaiah Kaiser. Shot goes up by Mankey, and it's good. Nice Malachi, job. Yeah, Malachi Mankey, he's got seven tonight to lead the Pioneers, and he makes it 23-21 on the Pro Forma scoreboard. The ball goes down to the floor, and everybody's diving after that one, and that ball goes back to Temple Christian. You know, Temple Christian did two things really well last possession. They broke the half court, or the, excuse me, three quarter court pressure, and then turned right around and executed offensively and got a 15 footer off a little high ball screen. So here come the Pioneers as they're down 23 21. There's a steal from Nanshoff out top. He tries to bring it down the middle. He'll go behind his back. Gets the ball down to Zamir Daniel. Takes it up against Clay, and there you see the strength. Zamir Daniel. What a nice job of getting down the low post. Knocks it in. He's got 10 to lead the Commodores, and it's 25-21. Yeah, and it wasn't that Clay played bad defensively. It was just a much better play offensively with the upper body strength and the finish. There's Clay comes down as he tries to take it up, and he misses the shot. He gets the rebound, takes it back up, defended by Zamir. Dan they're going to, well, excuse me, they're going to get Marcus Hill on that foul. As he I goes think it's up Daniel, actually. It's Daniel. That's his third. That is a huge foul. They've got him marked for two on the board. That's his third foul, yeah. So Dawson Clay will go to the line, the 6'5 senior. Knocks the, or misses the first one, it goes off the front of the rim. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line is our sponsor tonight. You know, one area of concern coming in tonight is Temple Christian's overall ability at the charity strike. Coming into tonight, Danny, they were only at 12 to 23 as a team, so really that's been an Achilles yeah. heel for them so far through the first three games. This is a great matchup here. Zamir Daniel and Dawson Clay battling it out in the middle. Shively with the ball, looks for some help. They'll go Jason Thomas, who takes the shot from the free throw line. He banks it in. Jason Thomas, the 6'3 senior, knocks it in. Makes it 27-21 on the Pro Forma scoreboard. Good job with the balance right there, getting his feet underneath him, knocking in that little 12-footer. Dupree takes the ball to the middle, and the uh, ball goes off the mark. Dawson Clay tried to grab it. And we're really seeing both squads making a conscious effort to get the ball to their big men. Oh, absolutely. They want to get it where a high percentage of the shots, yes. And, and, and you know what, right now the pace for Temple Christian is just a little bit more than Coach Bowman wants, so they're going to try to slow it down. There's a three ball on the way. That goes off the mark. That was Alex Patrick as he misses that one. Here comes Jason Thomas. Oh, and a nice play. What a play by Dawson Clay. Look, if you want to show a highlight play of how to get back and defend, what we just saw right there in Dawson Clay, the 6'5 senior, does everything to get back. Oh, yeah. I mean, he ran through the play from one end of the floor to the other. He's going to be a tired young man tonight. Yes, he is. <laughs> but you know what? He plays the game the right way, and he's playing, playing exceptionally hard at both ends of the floor. Hunter Scott checks in for the Commodores. This is Daniel and Dawson Clay. What a matchup those two have played. And not, Samir Daniel, are you kidding me? That's he's just physical <laughs> presence right there to go through, you know, the length of of clay right there he didn't do that the first half no, he's he made some adjustments here in the second samir daniel's got 12 to lead all scores tonight here comes Mankey with the dribble drive he'll kick it back out nice dribble drive by the pioneer shot goes up the rebound comes down this is andrew nanshaw hill and daniel each have six in this quarter to lead the commodores shot goes up and we're going to get a foul i think they got dupree i, I believe, believe you're right i believe you're right gilly 
They got Dupree on the foul. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to do this if uh, my buddy Mark Shine wasn't feeding me with all You're these. He's doing a good job, isn't he? a job, isn't he? I'm telling you, man. We make this a three-team booth every week. <laughs> Free throw goes up, and it's good. Number 21 for the Commodores. That is Sounds to me like Desmond that fella's Cobb. got a busy day tomorrow. Makes it 30-21 to 21 with 3.45 to go. He won't even shake his head and acknowledge it either. <laughs> He's already thinking about it. He's already thinking about it. Second shot goes up from the free throw line, and it's good. And whistle was blown. Yeah, I think that what he called was he stepped over. Stepped over the line, yeah. Perry's on a 15-4 to four run in this quarter, Gilly. So whatever Coach Nolte said to them at halftime, lit a fire under those Well, young and this is where, you know, if you're, you know, these next 345 is going to be very important for the visitors, the Pioneers, because you can ill afford to give Perry a little run any more than they've already had and extending this thing that from nine to where it is right now, you do you want to keep it down and try to just chip away at it. He's next th under 3.30 to go. There's the dribble drive. The shot goes up, and it's good. I, my goodness. I don't know how he made that, but uh, <laughs> Derek Schultz goes to the left side, throws it up, and it goes in. Yeah, I think he wanted to pass the thing and got himself in no man's land with it. And, and, was smart enough to, to keep from getting called for a travel. He just threw it towards a basket and it went in. But you know what? They all count. Absolutely. Two points. <laughs> Here's Derek Schultz with the ball again. Shot goes up. Rebound comes down. It looks like it went out of bounds, and they're going to say it goes back to the Commodores. And Mankey come down awkward on that right side, and he's hobbled a bit as he's holding on to his hamstring. We hope that young man's okay. 30-23 with 2.57 to go here in the third quarter. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Perry High School. Here come the Commodores. They'll race down the floor, and the ball gets thrown away, and they're going to say it's charge. They're guess who? A, yeah, they're going to get a charge. But guess who stepped in there? Dawson Clay. Dawson again. Clay stepped in there We've again, took the charge. Time. And they're going to say that uh, 21 for the Commodores, Desmond Cobb on the charge. That's his second foul. Yeah, a little bit out of control. Schultz brings it up, and he gets the ball over to Settlemeyer. Settlemeyer will bring it up to the right side. Swinging around to the freshman, number 22, Nolan Wright. Schultz swings it around Settlemeyer. He'll dribble drive. They'll swing it to right in the right corner. Going right with a three ball, goes off the mark, he gets his own rebound, nice hustle play, and he puts it back up and he puts it in. That's Nolan Wright, the freshman with the nice up and under, makes it 30-25 with 2.13 to Good go. Good job going after his own shot right there. He's the one that saw where it was gonna come off and played the angle, went and grabbed it. Everybody else stood and watched the action and he went and got it and finished it. Here's Zamir Daniel again, as they're trying to tie him up both ways. And they're going to say a foul on the floor, and they're going to get Settlemeyer on the call. I'm telling you, Gilly, this is a physical contest between Dawson Clay and Samir Daniel. Both these kids are you're playing taking, fantastic. You're taking your life in your own hands if you're going to reach <laughs> in on that young man. Because he is so doggone strong with it and keeps oh, it tight to his chest. They are both playing the game the right way. I'm telling you, they are playing hard, and they are playing fast. This is Daniel up top, guarded by Clay. They'll get the ball to Marcus Hill. He'll swing it over to Shively, run a little wheel action here for the Commodores. This is Hunter Scott. He'll dribble drive to the left side, bring it up left-handed, and he knocks it in. Nice job by Hunter Scott, the 6 2 The left-handed players are hard to guard, Gilly. They really are. They, well, yeah, <laughs> because, you know, when you do the scouting reports, very rarely do you have left-handers <laughs> that you have to prepare against. But that was a good move right there by that young man. Got the ball to his... Strong left hand and that right shoulder converted. Derek Schultz, 5'11", sophomore, knocks it in, makes it 32-27. The Pioneers keeping this one close with 1.15 to go in the third quarter. Schultz with 11. Schultz has got 11 for the Pioneers. He's got a great game tonight. This is Hunter Scott, the left-hander who had the last bucket for the Commodores. They'll go Marcus Hill up top. We're down to a minute. Hill is guarded and he's going to be checked by Number 12, excuse me, Malachi Menke. And that'll be a foul on Menke with exactly one minute to go. That's his first. Menke's got seven tonight for the Pioneers. 
We're down under a minute to go here. Perry leads 32-27. This is Shively, he'll swing it around to the right side. They'll try to get the ball down to Zamir Daniel and they're gonna say Dawson Clay impeded his uh, progress to the basket. That's his third. And that is a big foul. That young man is such a huge part of that offense and defense for the Pioneers. That was one of those right there. He just had to beat his man to the spot and couldn't do so. Checking in at the table for the Pioneers, number 32, Hewitt Wright. Samir Daniel will go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw line and knocks it in. He's got 13 tonight to lead all scores. I am very impressed with Samir Daniel tonight, the way he has come out in the second half and just basically said, hey, get on my back, fellas. Well, I'll take you. Yeah. Both, both seniors they've leaned on. They've leaned on Absolutely. Jason Scott for, for that and also Daniel, and, and that's what got him over the hump here in this third quarter was the play of those two seniors. And he knocks the second one in. He's got 14. It's 34-27 with 50 seconds to go. This is Nolan Wright, the freshman. He gets it over to Mankey. Mankey guarded up top by Hill. Mankey's going to try to go to the left side. Tries to clear a little space. Stuck his arm out there. Goes to the middle. He'll kick it back out to Wright. Wright goes to the right side. Mankey gets a screen from Settlemeyer. Thought about taking the shot. They'll kick it back out. We're down to 22 seconds. Remember Dawson Clay, the big man for Temple Christian, is on the bench with three fouls. I think he's trying to play it for the one possession here, the one shot. Pretty good job maintaining composure. And they're going to say they're going to get a foul. Uh, they're going to get a charge on. I didn't see uh, that. I did not see the charge. Uh, they haven't put the player's number on the board yet, but uh, the official said there was a charge on the call. It must have been away from the ball, Gilly. It must have been coming off of a screen. Is all I can figure out. <laughs> Down to nine. Here come the Commodores. And Nolte wants a timeout with seven seconds to go, and I bet he'd take that one back. He's got a smile on his face, Gilly, because he'd take that one back. We'll step aside here, and we come back with further action right after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School with seven seconds to go. The Commodores call a timeout, Gilly. Going to try to get that last shot as they lead 34-27. Yeah, I think initially, you know, Temple Christian was playing for the last shot, and, you know, we both think, you know, Mark made a great point yeah. right there. I think there was an illegal screen set. That, it had to be the call. So here come the Commodores. This is Hill up top. He swings it around. Dribble drive to the middle, and there's an excuse the corner, and the shot goes off the mark. That's how the third quarter will end. 34 to 27, the Commodores lead the Pioneers. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School. As we start the fourth quarter, Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert. Perry leads 34-27 over Temple Christian. And what a third quarter for the Commodores, Gilly. They came out on fire. And where did it start, though? Zamir Daniel. It, support, it started Zamir Daniel and their ability to get to the offensive glass. You know, and they hit those two offensive glass possessions there, and then I think they hit a three. And, you know, credit to to uh, Temple, it could have unraveled real quick and they hung in there and they've got it at seven right now with, you know, here starting the fourth quarter. This is Shively, swings it around to Marcus Hill. Marcus Hill dribble drive, they'll go Jason Thomas, takes it back outside. Nanchoff will run it down, get it back up to Marcus Hill. He'll reset with 7.35 to go. Perry leads 34-27. This is Nanchoff on the left side. He gets a screen from Zamir Daniel. Takes it inside, off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Pioneers. Derek Schultz will bring it down. He'll get it to Alex Patrick. They'll swing it back out top. Dawson Clay still on the bench, Gilly, with three fouls. When do you bring him back in? Actually, he oh, is. I'm sorry, he there. is on the floor. Sorry. My, okay. my mistake. I, I did not see him out there. They're going to go right back into Dawson Clay. He turns to go to the bucket. Thought he. Shuffled his feet a little bit, he puts it in. Dawson Clay makes it 34-29. He's got nine, that's his average. 
and he helps the Pioneers close the gap. Here's Samir Daniels. Oh, nice He's wall up. blocked by Clay, and they're going to get Marcus Hill on the foul as he comes down on top of Dawson Clay. Good wall up there by Clay. Very easily could have got his fourth right there. And I got to believe that Temple Christian, if they can break this uh, defensive set here by the Commodores, they're going to try to push the ball back down to Clay because he got really nice position down on low post. There's a jumper from the foul line off the mark. That goes way off the mark. And Jason Thomas got hit in the face, it looks oh, like to me. that's the case, that might be four. And, yeah, they're going to say Dawson Clay. That's his fourth foul. So, well, no, they're going to. No, okay. They, they did not mark it. I thought, I thought the official uh, team I thought it was, too, but it was 24. It was 24, yeah, so. That's his second. That's his second. Derek Schultz on the foul there, 6.35 to go. Perry leads 34-29. Both teams trying to get that first NWCC win tonight. This is Thomas, and he'll dribble drive, and they're going to say Thomas charged, and again, that is the third time tonight that Dawson Clay has taken a charge. Tell me, he stuck his nose in there every possession. That's a big time play right there, because you know what? You know those things hurt. And Dawson Clay kind of shaking his head a little bit. And trying to get, he looks a little, <laughs> he took a shot, Gilly. He took a shot. He did. Him and Samir Daniel are having a little laugh there because they both battled tonight. Two really big time warriors on this basketball floor. Clay comes and helps break the pressure. Here come the Pioneers as they do get it to Dupree on the right side. They'll bring it up top. There goes Clay down to the low post, guarded by Zamir Daniels. Dupree tried to get the ball down there, but Brady Shively with a nice on-ball defense. They'll swing it back over to Schultz. Schultz will go down low. Shot goes up, and it's off the mark, and a nice job there by Isaiah Kaiser of getting position. Here comes Zamir Daniels, coast to coast, and he lays it in. Zamir Daniel, what a great job by the senior. He's got 14 on the night to lead all scores, and makes it 30, excuse me, 16 on the night. He's got 36-29. Yeah, he doesn't flip it at the rim, does he? I mean, it's off of two feet, and he's strong with it. There's a shot, goes off the mark, and it's rebound by Clay. Clay gets position down low, takes it back up, off the mark. Rebound comes down, shot goes back up. Dupree gets the rebound, and that's nice offensive rebounding, but the ball goes out of bounds and go back to Perry. Gilly, you picked the wrong seat tonight. <laughs> wrong. I got, I got, got the, the hot seat. ticket. I got, got the best seat. Okay. <laughs> Here comes Perry up 36-29 with 5.20 to go. Nanshoff comes and brings the ball across the floor. Excuse me. He'll get it over to Marcus Hill. Marcus Hill guarded up top by Dupree. Zamir Daniel, they'll take a little time off the clock here. Shively on the right side. We'll get it back up to Nanchoff. Nanchoff dribble drive and he'll kick it back out. Perry taking their time here, up seven with 4.57 to go. And a nice backdoor cut by Marcus Hill and Jameer, Jameer Daniels saw him. And a nice job by Dawson Clay to knock it out of bounds. Entering the game now for the Pioneers, number 12, Malachi Menke comes back in. He was a little hurt when he went out of the game there and he was grabbing his leg. Let's see how he does when he comes back in the game. There's a nice cut by Jason Thomas. The ball goes on the floor, and they're going to say a jump ball. Boy, I, well, we'll go the jump ball. ball. Say head, held ball, yeah, right, right. So Mankey will take the ball out. Perry continues that pressure. Mankey gets the ball in the middle of the floor, gets it over to Dupree. Dupree tries to go to the middle of the floor. Nice job by the Pioneers of breaking that pressure. And a nice job there by Marcus Hill, stripping the ball away from Dupree. Here comes Jason Thomas as he takes it in, and he misses the dunk, and the ball goes off the rim. Rebound comes down to the Pioneers. Jason Thomas got up really high, but he just missed the dunk. They'll go back into Clay. Clay gets great position. He knocks it in. Dawson Clay knocks it in, and he makes it 36-31, and we got a barn burner with four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's a, that's a big four-point swing, partner. Here comes Dawson Clay as he gets the ball down the left side. Clay takes it up and he loses the ball as it goes out of bounds. But you're right, Jason Thomas misses the dunk. Temple Christian goes down, Clay gets the shot, a four-point swing. 
you know, not only, you know, the missed dunk opportunity, but, you know, how about the hanging on the rim? I mean, that's... I, I'm surprised there was no technical call as he hung on the rim for, for, for a while, right. yeah. Yeah, because there was nobody underneath him within, you know, distance of, of saying that he was trying to protect himself. Brady Shively off the left side as he misses the shot. Here comes Menke, and he'll go down the floor, gets it to the middle, looking for anybody to help him out. He's guarded by Hill. They're going to get a five-second call. That's absolutely the right call. He had no place to go. Yeah, he had nowhere to go with it. 3.46 to go. Lima Perry up 36-31. Temple trying to get back in this one, down five. Little we pressure, got a lot yeah. of basketball left. A little pressure now by the Pioneers as they get a steal as number 34, Isaiah Kaiser, gets the steal, takes the ball in, takes it up, and misses the shot. Rebound comes down to Daniel, and Kaiser tries to tie it up, and they get a held ball. Isaiah Kaiser missed the shot. Zamir Daniels grabs it. Did everything gets, right, yeah, didn't absolutely. he? absolutely. I mean, he took it up strong, got it up on the glass, protected the basketball. But, you know, made a great steal to get it going, just didn't finish it, but then, you know, makes a great defensive play right there, stuck his nose in there and secured the basketball there for a held ball. Perry will bring the ball down the floor, up 36-31. A little bit of pressure there by the Pioneers as they're trying to speed Perry up a little bit here on the offensive end of the floor, down 36-31. Cobb with the ball, gets it over to Shively. Shively swings it around to Hill. Hunter Scott on the left side, thought about taking the three. And they're going to get a foul on Mankey up top against... Looks like that was against Marcus Hill. That's his second of the night. I think he's got seven points for the Pioneers. Dawson Clay with 11 to lead the Pioneers. And also number 24, Derek Schultz with 11. Both those young men have had a good night for the Pioneers. Here's Brady Shively with the dribble drive to the middle of the floor. He'll kick it back out. They'll go Cobb up top. 2.48 to go. Perry leads by five. Yeah, they're Hunter's just done. real content to play for a layup, and that's and exactly go. what they got. Brady Shively with a nice move. The junior knocks in the deuce. He's got two tonight, and he makes it 38-33, or excuse me, 38-31. Boy, Shively come off that screen, and he was right to the bucket. Nice job by that young man. Yeah, nice, nice little finish right there. They did everything that the coach asked him to do. And now it uh, looks like Menke went down on the floor. He is hurt. He's coming off the floor. Yeah, we had talked about him earlier. He went, he was grabbing his hamstring, and he is going down, and the trainer's going to take a look at him as he goes down to the locker room. Let's hope he's all right. So Temple will take it out down 38 31 as they'll get it into Dupree, guarded up top by Marcus Hill. Three ball from the top of the key. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Marcus Hill. And it goes out of bounds, but it's going to go back to Perry. So there's a missed opportunity there with 2.19 to go. They got the shot they wanted, you know. Open, uncontested three, just a little bit short. There's a steal out top. Dupree with the ball on the left side. Kick it back out. Three ball from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Clay. And they're going to say Clay went over top of Zamir Daniel. That's his fourth. I'll tell you what, boy, you had both those kids on your squad. That'd be something mm -hmm. down low. Those are some strong kids. So with 2.10 to go, the Perry Commodores lead 38-31. We'll have further action right after these messages. Welcome back to Perry High School. We're with 2.10 to go in this one, Gilly. The Commodores lead 38-31. What have the Pioneers got to do to get this one down to reasonable? I mean, they're down seven. Make shots. Yeah. I mean, you, th you think <laughs> right. about the last two, they had wide open threes. Unfortunately, just couldn't knock them in. Those go in. I mean, Absolutely. you split the thing in half. Here's Hill on the dribble drive. Tries to get it to Zamir Daniel. He loses the handle of the ball. Pioneers will get it. They'll try to bring this one down. 156 to go. Right with the ball up top. He'll swing it over to Dupree. This is Dupree, dribble drive. He loses the ball. 
But it's corralled by Nolan Wright. They'll go back to number 34. Isaiah Kaiser shot goes up and it's good. Makes it 38-33 with 137 to go. The Pioneers have closed the gap to five with 137 to go. And Gilly right there, that was all hustle. That was all muscle and it wasn't bad defense by, by uh, Scott. He walled him up and he just better finish right there. That's one of those shots that he didn't make off the steal. If you remember right, that one he does, he gets it on the glass, gets it on the square and knocks it in. We're looking at a five point game, two possession. Uh, last time out, the Temple Christian Pioneers lost a big one to Arlington, 83-44. Before that, they got two big wins against Bowling Green Christian Academy, 56-14, and they beat Continental, 39-27. So they'd love to get back into the win column here after a uh, tough loss to Arlington. And you look at Perry, started out 0-2, but a nice win against Delphi Shepson. They get this one, they're 2-2 and 1-0 and in the Northwest Central Absolutely, Rockets. yes. That's the important piece. You know, right, you get right. the first league conference win, you're not, you're not chasing. Well, both these teams are going to continue to get better. They're going to continue to, to find out what they can and can't do. And right now, the identity for Temple Christian is to get the ball down to the big man on the block. Right. He's a nice player. He really is. So Perry will take the ball out with 137 to go, up 38-33. Temple applies the pressure. And they're going to say it's a foul on Derek Schultz. That's his third foul tonight. There's a steal from Schultz. Takes it back in. Shot goes up. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. Zamir Daniel battles Dawson for that rebound. And that was a two-foot shot they missed there. That's what we saw from Perry in the first half, Gilly. And now we're seeing yeah. it from Temple in the second half. You know, and Temple's done a really good job forcing the turnovers off of their pressure. It's just unfortunate they can't get any shots to fall off of that pressure. Andrew Nanchoff will go to the line. Nanchoff on the night. First one is good. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Nanshoff lets the second one fly, and it's good. And he makes it 40-33 with 125 to go. That's two big free throws huge. right there yeah, for the huge, Commodores. Huge. Commodores. There's a dribble drive. Nobody picks him up. He takes it all the way in. There you saw Isaiah Kaiser. Nobody picked him up from the free throw line. He goes in and gets fouled. He's going to go to the line. And the huge thing about that, Gilly, is the clock stops. The clock stops, yep. That one's on Shively. Makes it 40-33 with 1.16 to go. Kaiser lets the first one fly, and it goes off the mark. Got a chance for a second one here. Cut the lead to six. Temple has two timeouts left. And Perry also has two timeouts left. Guys are coming in and averaging just a little over eight points per contest. Second one's on the way, and he knocks that down, makes it 40-34. Here comes Nanshoff. He'll get it to Shively. Shively looks up, finds Jason Thomas all alone, puts the shot up, goes off the mark. Rebound comes down, and it's corralled by the Pioneers. This is Derek Schultz. He'll get it over to Dupree. Dupree takes it down to the corner. Tried to get it inside to Dawson Clay. He gets his the ball was loose on the floor. Dupree on the left side. Rebound comes down to Hill, and Hill's going to bring it down. We're under a minute to go. Perry leads 40-34. Opportunity was there for the Pioneers. They just couldn't take advantage. Perry up top, trying to use that clock. Ball goes it back into the backcourt. Corralled by Shively and Steele on the way, and he knocks it in. Makes it Isaiah Kaiser with the steal, and he makes it 40 36. We're down to a four point game, Gilly, with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, Temple Christian will not go away. <laughs> they won't. <laughs> I'm telling you, they are very, very resilient, and Perry has played a really good second half, a lot better than the first half, and Temple just continues to battle back. Yeah, they keep clawing back into this thing, and 
I'm just going to say this, Darren. The, the way the kids from Perry have responded to Coach Nolte is really impressive. He's done a nice job in the second half. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that first half, it was the bugaboo for them. And, <laughs> right. And they come out and, and really played well in there to start that third quarter. But now they're hanging on for their dear life. And it's it's two been very well coached. Absolutely, games by yeah. Two, by two coaches. Uh, very, the, yeah. Very the kids played very hard at both ends of the floor for both ball clubs. I'm very impressed with Coach Nolte and how he's got his squad playing. We're going to see a lot of free throws in this, in this next 30 and a half seconds. So with 30 seconds to go, Perry leads 40 36. And I'm sure Coach Nolte's telling his kids just get the ball in bounds. We've got to get the ball in bounds. And if you're Bruce Bowman, you got to get a steal somewhere here with 30 seconds well, to go. Well, you've got to get a steal, and if, if the steal's not there, you've got to get a foul. Yeah, foul yeah. immediately, absolutely. So Shively will take it out underneath Temple's basket. Temple in a full man-to-man -man press. They'll get it into Marcus Hill, and Marcus Hill is fouled immediately. So he will go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Hill comes to the free throw line. He's got eight points tonight. He is Perry's leading scorer on the season. Averaging 11.7 a game. He's got eight tonight. First one's on the way, and it's good. He's got nine on the night to make it 41-36. Now remember, they've hit their last three at the charity strike, partner. And it's Absolutely. a five-point yeah. game, yep. so. Yep, you're right. You now when you make big free throws down the stretch and keep that lead, 29 seconds to go. Perry leads 41-36. Hill's got the second one here. Let's it fly, and it's good. Four for four. He's done a great job at the line tonight. He's got 10 for the Commodores, makes it 42-36. Here come the Com or excuse me, the Pioneers. Alex Patrick will bring it up, swing it over to Dupree. Dupree goes to the middle. Clock continues to run. Three ball from the left side, goes off the mark. Dupree gets the ball, they kick it back out. Temple Christian with the three on the right side. Get the, another rebound and it's gonna go out of bounds and it'll go back to Perry. Temple had their chances, Gilly. Sure Just did. Seven Chased seconds it down, to go. got another three. With seven seconds to go, that'll make it 42-36. And all Perry has to do, partners, get it in here and get to the free throw line. Nick. And the clock is stopped for some reason. And not real sure what happened if that was an inadvertent horn. Forty-two thirty-six. I think he's gonna reset the clock to seven. I, I, yeah, I was gonna say it went from seven one to six four. They had a little technical problem there with the clock, so nobody hurt. No nothing happening there. Perry will inbounds the ball here. Shively on the side, he gets it in and they're gonna foul immediately. Marcus Hill will go back to the line. That foul is gonna come on number 24, Derek Schultz. Schultz with a great game for the Pioneers tonight. He's had 13, done an excellent job. Marcus Hill will go to the line for two shots. Chance to go into double figures for the Commodores. First one on the way, and it's good. He's been really good for the line tonight, Gilly. Yeah, and they're making him at the, at the ideal time in the ball game, and that's crunch time late in the fourth quarter. Boss Harrison steps in for the Commodores, number 12, the junior. And Hill's going to let the second one fly, and nothing but net. That young man's got 11 tonight, and he makes it 44-36 with five seconds to go. Dupree's going to bring it up, and they're not going to get a shot up, and that will do it. After four quarters of play, the Perry Commodores have defeated the Lima Temple Christian Pioneers 44-36. And, Gilly, it was a great second half from the Perry Commodores. It was. You know, they got, they got the lead back in the third quarter with resiliency of getting the ball to the rim and, and took the lead, had to hang on for dear life, give a lot of temp, to Temple Christian a lot of credit, too, there. You know, they could have folded the tents going down seven and nine. They battled back, chipped away at it. But in the end, Perry was ability to hit the free throws down the stretch going a perfect six for six here in this fourth quarter. 
to come away victorious tonight, more importantly, to get that first league win, 44-36. Yeah, you, you look at the Perry Commodores, and their big guy stepped up. Zamir Daniel ends up with 16 points. Marcus Hill with 13. Jason Thomas with six. They really took an effort to get it down low, and the big men did a great job. Well, the two seniors, you know, Zamir and, and Jason set the tone, like I said, in that third quarter with their ability to get to the rim and finish plays and also just rebound the basketball and Marcus Hill's ability, you know, down the stretch to make the free throws and do the things necessary. But uh, a huge win for Perry here uh, starting out league play and Temple Christian, you know, I think Coach Bowman found out tonight the players he's playing on the floor, he's found out in some situations that he can press people and be effective with it. So it's going to be a learning, you know, tool that Temple sure. Christian can take away from here. And, uh, you know, but Coach Bowman's kids are not going to give up. They're going to keep come back, keep coming back and competing. And, and uh, I like the grittiness of their kids and their attitudes. And, you know, good luck to them as the yeah, season so Derek progresses. Schultz, Derek Schultz leads the Pioneers with 13 and Dawson Clay with 11. And Dawson Clay was fantastic tonight. Well, what, with three or four charges he yeah, took yeah, tonight. Yeah. You know, he was a demon on the glass. And, uh, but uh, nice win for Perry. And, you know, best of luck to them as, as we get to Christmas time and second part of the season, which is in January. Yep. And that'll wrap it up from Perry High School for our camera woman, Megan Sherrick, for our statistician, Mark Shine, the best in the business. He is. The best in the business. He is the man. <laughs> for Darren Gilbert, I'm Danny Holbrook, saying we'll see you next week. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.